and well, welcome to another video. We are back out in the bank and you join us up at Hawcott Lakes in the Cotswolds targeting some big scaly carp. Now you've got the two of us, but we're also joined by the legend that is Frank Warwick and also Simon Drew from ProLogic. Now they'll be filming their own little piece of the ProLogic channel, which will be coming out in the next few weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that. But fingers crossed, we can obviously make our own little video, mate, and make it an absolute banger. So do you want to tell them what we did when we arrived yesterday? Yeah, so we got it yesterday. Unfortunately, the weather was really grim, so um, it was a little bit of a rush to get set up. But as we got into the car park, there was a lad that um, was fishing out the car park swim and actually had an absolute banging 30 pounder. So we managed to get a bit of footage of that and helping out with the photos. It was a lovely fish and um, a brilliant example of the sort of fish you can get in this place. Um, we decided to use the taxi service, which is basically a quad with a little uh, trailer behind it. You can chuck your kit in it and it saves you having to barrier to your swim, which saves a lot of mucking around. And um, yeah, when you're a little bit unfit like me and you, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a handy thing to do. So um, anyway, we're not going to talk for too long because the weather, although we've got a bit of breaking at the moment, is definitely coming over the trees over there and it's probably going to be raining in a minute. So we'll stick the cameras under the bivvy, but let's hope we can have a few, mate. And um, come on, let's get on it. Let's get on it. Ooh. That's your bivvy. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought I'd just take a couple of minutes to talk through the tactics we went in with last night. Now, if you've been watching the channel for some time, you'll probably realise when we're out together, we'd like to try and fish as a team. And we did exactly that last night. So I put out three zigs, whereas Sean, on the other hand, found a nice little clear area, put out three Ronnies and a bit of bait. So two completely contrasting tactics. The idea of that being that, obviously, if I started picking up some fish on zigs, then we know that's the going tactic. We can put all six wads over and quite quickly then start sort of hopefully picking out a few more fish. And obviously, yeah, like I say, working as a team. Now, if you're new around here and you haven't seen the channel before, please make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any future content going forward. And hopefully you enjoy the video and welcome to the channel. Now, I'm going to hand straight over to Sean now. He's going to talk through the bait that he was putting out last night. And hopefully that'll be useful for your spring fishing. Right, let's have a look at the bait then. So the mix I've been using, I've just knocked this one up actually, so it's looking a little bit sloppy and it probably will normally, but I will basically leave this for about half an hour or an hour just to thicken up. And the reason it's like that is because this is mainly a ground bait mix. And the reason for that is going to be offering them loads of attraction and not a lot of food, so there's more chance of getting a few bites and keeping them rooting around. So the mix itself is the new insect meal from DNA. I've also got some of the bug um, stick mix as a 50-50 combo. I've added some liquids to that, some of the calanus and some of the DNA bug liquid, um, liquid food. To that then I wanted a few more bigger items just to offer a little bit of food. So I've chucked in some of the mini and maxi cray mix pellets. Very, very potent. Absolutely love that stuff. And I've also chucked in some of the DNA bug boilies as well. So loads of goodies in there to try and get the fish rooting around, not feed them too much, and hopefully more chance of getting a fish on the bank. But anyway, what I wanted to show you is a wicked little tip. So if I take you over to the rods, what I like to do when I'm spotting is um, obviously make things as easy as possible. Now a lot of people use like a, a spod stand or they might use like a couple of buckets stood up. But one really simple thing to do is literally just to put your bucket on top of your rods and then you haven't got to bend down so far. It's actually a tip I got off of Hugh. I'm pretty sure he nicked it off of Tom Maker, but saves yourself a lot of um, backache and makes the job a whole lot easier. So give it a go, catch yourself some more fish. <laughs> So you've seen the bait I'm using, and this is the hook baits I'm putting over the top of it. So on the bottom, there's something that's been doing me a lot of bites this winter, fishing shorter sessions and fishing locally, and that is the Fruit Alicious and the Pink Peril, so orange and pinks, and they've been really, really good. I've got a lot of confidence in them at the moment, so I decided to put them out over the um, little baited area because I'm using a lot of dark sort of feed items, and I think those are going to stand out really nicely and potentially draw the attention of a slightly lethargic fish. And then on the top of it, just sort of match the hatch i'm using the um crayfish wafters skin on the slip d ronnie i'm just fishing it as a wafter and um, that just sort of matches the hatch it uh, matches the pellet that is in that spob mix so yeah three different hook baits to try and sort of see which one they fancy and hopefully produce the goods and get myself a bite <laughs> Well 
Well, I thought I'd just talk you through my zig rig and its makeup then. So starting at the hook bait, this is one of the DNA candy stick pepper squid versions. So a nice black additional to the range. That goes down to a size eight micro barbed hook as per fishery rules. We've got two bits of silicon on there. One is trapping the hook bait as tight to the shank of the hook as I can get it. And then the other bit is just going over the knotless knot to make sure it doesn't slip. Now, when it comes to zig line, there's a few out there in the market, but for me personally, especially on a weedy water like this, I wouldn't go any lower than 12 pound. And in fact, this is 15 pound, just a personal preference for me. And then we're going down to an extra large anti-tangle sleeve. And that just obviously helps, as it says, prevent tangles in flight, make sure that the rig kicks out as it hits the water and I'll also put two bits of PVA nugget onto the hook bait that just also helps give some separation in flight and obviously make sure it doesn't get snarled up in any bits of weed that it might come into contact once it's in the water. If you're in the market for a new zig rig or you're just getting into fishing hopefully that's of some help. I thought I'd just talk about bite indication when it comes to zig fishing. So rule number one and most important thing to remember is to have a bowstring tight line. The reason for that is as soon as the lead moves out in the lake you want to know it at the bite alarm and obviously you've got a long hook length for, so the carp have got a lot of play and every little movement you need to know on the bite alarm. The second thing I say and it's one thing I've most definitely messed up on this session is to bring some nice big heavy bobbins. I've got some little dinky ones in here they're not ideal for zig fishing. You want something that's going to add some weight and some tension back into the line and every little movement out in the lake is going to be transferred to your bite alarm. So there you go, a couple of things to keep in mind when you're zig fishing. Right then, lunchtime update. Just finishing off my burger, nearly done. But I thought I'd give you a bit of an update of what's happening. At the moment, not a lot, if I'm honest, but we've seen a few fish showing just beyond our sort of limitation to the swim. So unfortunately we can't sort of go beyond a certain distance really. So we are trying to keep within sort of our boundary. But um, there's been a few fish sort of dumping out and the guy on the point has had a couple of fish this morning. So um, they're definitely closer to him at the moment, but you never know. Um, they might they might move out drift around the lake move around obviously they've got fins they swim about there is every chance they might come across us but I am still fishing on the bottom Hugh is still fishing on zigs and we're just going to see if one of the other produces a bite and then potentially switch over accordingly so it's looking good for a bite it does look pretty good if I'm honest um, Frank's had a couple of tench fishing over a bit of maggot so not even a maggot has sort of worked its wonders today but um, again Simon's not had anything either so Yes, we are all blanking, but I think there's definitely a bite on the cars, and I think we're going to finish off with something before the day's out. So um, I'm going to finish off this burger and go and find out what Hugh's getting up to. Right, so Hugh's um, been round in Simon and Frank's swim for uh, the last couple of hours, bending Frank's here, asking loads of questions about tactics and all stuff carpy. And um, he's basically, Mock, you're going around there now. <laughs> basically, he's come up with a question that he really wants to ask him. He thinks you guys are going to find it really interesting. So he thought he'd set the camera up and ask him on camera, on film, so that you guys can actually watch it. And to be honest, it is a really cool topic. And it is something that I think guys in the um, UK especially will probably benefit from. So anyway, I'm going to hand you over to Hugh. He's going to go around there and we're going to share some of that knowledge from Frank with you guys. And hopefully you can put it into your fishing and hopefully catch yourselves a few more fish. 
Right then, so I've just popped round into Frank Swim and I've got a bit of a question that I've been thinking a little bit about since talking to him at the shows and that is Frank, so you've done a huge amount of fishing across the world, you know, and a huge amount in Europe in particular. Yeah. Do you think there is anything as British anglers that we are kind of a bit behind the time and haven't maybe sort of learned from there? Yeah, yeah there's, doing? there's lots of things. It was easy to think that uh, us British anglers are superior because I suppose it was the birthplace of carp fishing in the UK. Uh, but obviously you get very good anglers across the world and across Europe there's some amazing anglers and I've seen lots of different things that have influenced me actually. Uh, I, I was doing match fishing in Romania on a place called Tankerbest, uh, the Two Brothers Lakes and the first prize was 10,000 euros, this was about uh, 10 years ago and uh, I realised that you know Money don't grow on trees in Romania, and when there's 10 grand up, these people, they don't sleep. If they're doing a week-long match, they do not sleep for a week. Yeah. And uh, they talk about effort, it was unbelievable. And I, I went round into a swim to our next-door neighbours, and I noticed they'd got alarm clocks under every rod. Right. And the penny drops immediately. I knew what was going on. In a split second, I knew they were timing the rods from when they'd done a cast, and how long they were going to leave it out. Right, okay. And it instantly struck a chord with me that, and I thought, do you know what? In England, we, when we, what, why do we recast? Do we do anything scientific? We don't. No. We don't actually, all you do is you go, you follow the trends, you think, do you know what? I'll not have a recast in the morning because it's feeding time, classically in the morning. And you go, I'll leave that and I'll perhaps redo them at about 11 ish after the so-called perceived feeding spell and then you go about an hour before dark you think I'll tell you what I'll do all three rods yeah and it's very typical so we're all doing a fairly similar thing I mean I've done that as well you know it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not unique but I suddenly realized when I was in Romania that it's it's a bit contrived and a little bit stupid what we're doing it's almost like we're not learning anything from it yeah so I also know Pete Holhouse my friend was the England coach for the England scene before Rob Hughes took over. And fishing with Pete, you use a lot of solid bags. Yeah. And solids are a thing all on their own. They're a different entity because you're using a short hook length, yeah. a lot of small pellet. If the fish has been in there and done you, yep. got away with it, it stripped you, quite possibly stripped your solid uh, bag approach, exposed the lead and you've got a very short hook length and you've not, you, the trap's been blown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore, with particularly with solid bag fishing, you're more inclined to recast regular. Yeah. Uh, but that also begs the question, what makes that unique from other sort of types of fishing? Because if they've done you, I'm sure that they go, whoa, there's something there. You yeah, yeah. On the underwater films where they'll just somehow avoid that area where that rig is and they can wait days to get a bite again and they have to reset it continually yeah and even resetting it's not always the answer but it, it helps yeah 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 so what what became apparent to me was why not scientifically go on a water and, and then put an alarm clock out and set one for maybe two hours so the alarm goes off every two hours and you get that rod in religiously you put a new bag on it a new solid or have, just have a recast even if it's a single and then Another rod, you could do the middle rod, for example, four hours. So it goes off every four hours. You do that rod in four hours time, mm. uh, on the four hours. The other rod, eight hours. And then keep notes. And then, well, I've done it. Yeah. And guess what? Which rod do you think produced most fish? Well, I'm guessing you, you would expect that potentially leaving it out there for eight hours and it having time for them to be less wary and but then actually no, I don't know it's quite the opposite yeah so two hours what more attraction generally speaking the rod that you redo every two hours gets more bites yeah it's not set in concrete that there's other waters where you might have to wait sit on your hands for 24 yeah yeah but you could you could easily miss out by not trying it recasting regular or two hours four hours some ro some waters might be uh, uh, every 30 minutes yeah yeah, yeah. there's a lot of fishing yeah so what i'm saying is the only way you can really learn something is to, to start timing the rods and doing a a proper experiment yeah 
and it could even be just changing bait colours and then timing how long it takes to get a bite different colours different colour yeah and different, so different attractions it's the tip of the iceberg yeah well, <coughs> and before Something before like you tell them any more yeah and I pretend to lose any of my edges yeah I'm going to cut you off yeah. there okay. and, and turn that one off and then all you're right. going to keep telling me and I'm hopefully going to be better all right yeah, all right. So that's, so, that's yeah. One to think about but there you go yeah some some knowledge from Frank from yeah. uh, him to you so hopefully you've enjoyed that back at the van then that is the end of the session spend the evening in frank and simon swim sort of chatting away about fishing stuff and as you do making plans for the future hopefully we're going to get out on the bank with them again in the not too distant future but it's been a great little session although we haven't caught we've really enjoyed it we've had a good catch up with them a nice chat and um, it's nice to get out and do our first night of the year, isn't it, mate? Yeah, absolutely, mate. And I think sometimes you can get all caught up in sort of making sure we catch and going home a little bit stressed when you haven't. But do you know what? We just weren't on the fish on this occasion. We couldn't get any closer to them. Fair play, the people that were caught. So good angling on their part. So I guess, mate, that's the end of that. And um, all it is for us to say is go check us out on all the social media shown at the bottom of the screen. And until next time, get out in the bank, be lucky. Anything to say, mate? And we'll see you in the next video. See you in the next video.